It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man, the myth, the legend, and my father, Chief Investment Officer, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking? How are you on this fine, fine weekend here in January? Well, I'm thinking about jumping on a plane and flying back home, right? I came to Florida to get a little sunshine, a little warmth. It's freezing down here. You know what, Bob? Humor me. What is the temperature in Naples, Florida right now? Uh, you might think this is warm. It's uh, you know low 50s, but there's people walking around in parkas and ski caps. Uh, you think you're at a ski resort as opposed to a, uh, you know, a sunny resort in Florida. <laughs> Low 50s, come on. It's uh, It was like 20s here in New York this week. Uh, I'll tell you, I have no empathy for you. Uh, you're right, in a much better I'll place otherwise. <laughs> yeah, small, small island in the world for you this morning, Bob. Uh, All right. <laughs> well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about one of the darker sides of finance, but the death of a spouse. In the event something happens to you, is your spouse protected are you financially organized or are you leaving a mess behind for your loved ones to inherit? Bob and I are going to discuss how you can protect yourself or really protect your spouse in the event something happens to you. We're going to talk to my good friend this morning, New York City-based CPA, Jeff Bernstein. He's coming into the studio. He's going to talk a lot about the new tax reform and he's going to give us a breakdown of some of the highlights so you can be best prepared this year for your taxes. Uh, along with this week's financial pornography, a lot of stuff out there in the media that we want you to avoid this week. Bob and I are calling out the biggest offenders of financial pornography. And we have another special guest on the show this morning. We have our financial advisor, Jen, financial angel. She's going to discuss a real case that she worked on this past week. And she's going to point out some of the mistakes or flaws that this specific couple was making with their planning and investing. So you can avoid those mistakes with your own planning and investing. So let's hop to it. Let's talk about, Bob, one of the darker sides of being a financial planner, and that's really when one of our clients has a death of a spouse. You know, Ryan, that's something that we just dealt with just recently. One of our favorite clients died in his mid-90s, had a great life, passed away, you know, and it kind of was expected, but nonetheless, it's, it's very sad. And But even more sad, I lost a really dear friend uh, over the holidays, and that was unexpected. And I'm still sad, and I just can't imagine you know, how the surviving spouse feels, you know, knowing how I feel, you know, experiencing the death of somebody you care about. But, you know, last night I checked, son, no one gets out of this alive. So we know that death is inevitable. But what are some of the things that you should be doing to prepare, you know, for the death of a spouse? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it is it is a harder thing to talk about. And, you know, we've had many, many spouses pass away uh, as financial planners. And the big thing is, it's just, there's a lot that needs to be done uh, when God forbid, when your loved ones pass away, and that's why it's so critical, Bob. You know, is to be financially organized, and that's why that's always rule number one when you come into paying capital. Is you know, we build our clients a personalized portal, our 360 portal, where everything's in one place. Because the reality of it is, we typically don't have everything in one place. Yeah, but you know what, Ryan? You know what's happening today? You know, over the last 40 years. It wasn't unusual for people to put that those documents in a drawer or to put them in a safety deposit box, but everything's becoming digitized. It's online. What about all those sign-ons and those passwords? You know, oh. it's going to be a nightmare for a lot of people, don't you think? I mean, I can't remember. I, I can't think of remember any of my passwords <laughs> except for like <laughs> three or four, and then they're always changing. Um, and I think that is one of the more modern day problems we have. It's just like there's so many freaking passwords. And that's kind of oh, yeah, the beauty of that 360 bank portal. accounts, right? Brokerage accounts, retirement plans, insurance policies, yeah. loans, credit cards, mortgages. Oh my goodness, I run out of breath talking about all these things. Yeah, and it's like every every two months, it's like you need to change your password now. You just remembered your password, and now they're telling you to change it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then when you lose um, a spouse, right, you then have to contact Social Security, you have to contact the insurance company. Not a simple thing. Where's your marriage certificate, right? You have to prove that you were married. And then on top of that, you have to order a two dozen death certificates. There's a lot of work involved. That's why it's so important, Ryan, to be organized. You're absolutely right. What are some of the other things that you need to do? 
Well, I think first and foremost, Bob, is you have to tally up where everything is. Um, mm-hmm. You need to know where all those insurance policies are held. Um, there needs to be a place where there's a, a list of all these different things. You know, So in the effect something happens to you, they, they aren't... Like I had to give an example. We had a client whose spouse had passed away. They came into work with us. And I mean, there were literally certificates inside of a shoebox. You know, it's oh, like unbelievable. Get everything yeah. in one place, put it in one shopping bag, as we always say. Yeah, but you know what, Ryan? The other thing that happens is, you know, life happens, right? Life continues to happen. So you've got to make sure you're paying your bills. But more importantly, you need to have a budget. And that's the unfortunate thing. And when you have a couple, when you have a joint account and you have a relationship, it's usually one spouse is the financial spouse and the other spouse is completely in the dark. And it's not unusual for someone to come in. And we have to sit down and tell them, hey, you got to stop spending, you know, all this money. And they said, well, what are you talking about, Rod? I have all these checks still in my checkbook. You know, they don't realize that it's, it's a balance they're spending. They're just, you know, they're just not financially literate. So it, you got to have a budget, right? You have to stick to that budget. Um, and again, it's all about getting organized now when you can control your behavior and control what's going to inevitably happen to all of us. Yeah. And I think this is a beginning of the year is a great time to do that. It's just get everything organized. And I think the best way to do that is when those statements come in this month, put them in that brown paper bag and you know make sure they're all in one place. And then from there, that's where technology comes in. And that's why I think our 360 portal is only the greatest thing since sliced bread, Bob, because literally what we'll do is we'll load everything into one place. You'll put the legal docs into a mm-hmm. vault so they're there, any insurance policies, and budgeting. You can do some budgeting tools. You can look at yep. what you're spending on your credit card. What does that budget look like? You know, What have you spent in the past? You can bring all that data in so you really have one place to kind of get those things, let's say, wired. If, God forbid, something happens to you, you're not leaving a mess for those behind. Yeah, then why have to why remember all those sign ons and passwords, which you and I can't even remember our own, when you can just have one and everything can be in that vault, you know, protected with two hundred and fifty six bit encryption where no one can hack it. And you have all that information in one spot, one go to place, you know, for that one day when, when you definitely need it. You know what that sounds like to me, Bob? <laughs> it sounds like financial therapy. Um, <laughs> and if you're <laughs> and if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need to get financially organized. And you know you do. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will do just that. We will get you financially organized. We'll build you our famous 360 portal where we'll load everything in one place. We'll analyze it. We'll look at the holistic financial picture. And then we'll do a full x-ray of your entire portfolio, all your 401ks, IRAs, brokerage accounts, all in one place. And we're going to look at income. We're going to look at the cash flow. How much income does your portfolio produce annually? Income is so critical for retirement. Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. You're probably paying a lot of fees you don't know hidden in your portfolio. We're going to find all the hidden costs to show you what you're really being charged on your investments and make sure you're not being overcharged on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Are you taking too much risk in your portfolio? What pitfalls do you have? Do you have too many accounts where you own too many of the same things? Bob, we're going to point out all the flaws to make sure that your portfolio is retirement ready. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or you can text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We're the team at No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. 
And this week on the Street of Dreams, the market zoomed to new fresh all-time record highs with the Dow closing above 26,000 for the first time in its 121-year history. Now, it just took seven trading sessions for the Dow to climb from 25,000 to 26,000, making it the fastest 1,000-point climb ever. Now, the Dow's up five and a quarter percent year to date with a trailing one-year return of 34%. Great performance, but still lags behind the best performing markets on the globe. And that would be emerging markets up six and three quarters percent, and even better performance so far this year from the frontier markets up eight and a half percent year to date. Now, the past year, we've had much better performance on a relative basis from non-U.S. equities than we have from U.S. equities. But wealth creation's not about relative performance. It's about having the most amount of shares of an investment before it goes up. That's a lesson I learned when I worked at Merrill Lynch when my Merrill Lynch stock had the same relative performance as the CEO of Merrill Lynch, but he created a lot more wealth because he simply had a lot more shares. Now, hockey great Wayne Gretzky's famous quote, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it has been, applies to investing. The best time to have accumulated emerging market shares was a few years back when the shares were on sale and was underperforming the U.S. market. Investors who bought and accumulated shares in those years created a lot more wealth on a relative basis in the past 12 months with emerging markets 40% surge. So investing is not about relative performance. It's about the creation of wealth and a portfolio diversified across asset classes and within asset classes presents wealth creating opportunities on a daily basis. Now, if you want to know where the puck's going in your portfolio, give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. This is Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest goals is education. We want to give you simple, common sense tips that you can apply to your portfolio, to your investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, the highlights of the new tax reform that you can download by simply texting the word BULLISH. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. We break down all the new highlights so you're better prepared for taxes this year. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. It's a simple guide, two-pager, give you all the highlights at 555-888. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. And speaking of taxes, we have a very special guest on the program this morning, a good friend of mine and the principal of Bernstein, Rosen & Company, uh, CPA right here in New York City, Jeff Bernstein. Jeff, great to have you on the show, brother. Always good to see you. Thank you. It's great to be here. You are my go-to guy for taxes in New York, but no pressure. <laughs> okay, that's a, I'll take that title. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, obviously we had some big changes with the tax reform this year. You know, what are some of the, the bigger changes that we need to be aware of as we do our planning this year? What, what's some of the highlights that you would talk about? Uh, sure. There are obviously incredibly large changes. Uh, this is a very, very big tax bill, the biggest one since the Tax Reform Act of 1986. Wow. And yes, I was around for that. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so was I, the, just a toddler. <laughs> there, there's two basic sections. You got the corporate side and the individual side. Yep. On the individual side, the tax rates have gone down. That is the good news. Um, yes. There are still seven tax brackets. The top rate has dropped from 39.6 to 37%. And everything below that the amount of income that you can earn and pay a lower tax rate has increased. So that is the good news. The bad news. What's the bad news, Jeff? <laughs> bad Give it news. to us. And of course, everyone's heard this. It's been all over the news and it's called SALT. 
SALT state and local tax deductions. It's like salt in the wounds. That's, it's <laughs> certainly rubbing it in. Uh, th- those are now uh, basically gone. Uh, individual taxpayers can only deduct up to $10,000 of income and real estate tax. So for taxpayers in high tax states such as New York, California, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, they can only deduct $10,000, and that really hurts if you're in these states because the tax rates are high and real estate tax rates are high. So the big question is how will the lower tax rates offset that hurt of losing those SALT deductions? I have a feeling in our states they don't offset the hurt, but I could be wrong about that. It's One thing about this tax plan I find very interesting, it's very all over the place in terms of who it will help and who it will hurt. For instance, they increase the standard deduction by a lot. The standard deduction now, if you're single, is $12,000, and if you're married, is 24000 Okay. They've also done away with exemptions for dependents. So if you happen to have five kids, then you just lost $20,000 of dependent exemptions because wow. they've replaced that with a higher standard deduction. So if you have a lot of kids, that will hurt you. If you had very little itemized deductions, like you were renting and you're married, then that $24,000 standard deduction is going to be great for you. Yeah. No, that's a good point. So it's a good point. It's uh, it kind of a lot of twists and turns of who's going to get hurt and who's going to get helped in this uh, new tax reform. Sure. I, I certainly would recommend that everyone speak to their tax advisor and see how this will affect them because it certainly will affect a lot of people in different ways and they need to be prepared because no one wants to be hit next April with a big tax bill and possible interest and penalties. Well, I think the other thing is the deduction of mortgage interest. You know, you have, uh, you only deduct it on your primary residence. You can't deduct it on uh, lines of credit now like it could before. Uh, do you think this will impact the housing industry in any way, Jeff? Um, I think it will to a certain extent. Of course, that extent is unknown. Uh, I'll give you a small example. The day after they proposed this, coincidentally, the day after it was proposed, I had a young couple in my office, um, and they were just we were talking about them moving out of New York City up to one of the suburbs and buying a house. And as I explained to them, well, you know that and the, you know, they were going to buy a, a house and have a large mortgage. And uh, deduct it. Explaining to them that you know, well, you can only deduct uh, the maximum mortgage you could have now is only seven hundred and fifty thousand. It went mm-hmm. down from a million, and they can't deduct their real estate taxes. It's certainly the look on their faces said it all. Well, should we really be doing this? So I think it will have some impact, especially in those towns that have a very good school district and therefore very high taxes. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, and you know, one of the reasons, one of the things that we've been looking at for clients, um, and you maybe can attest to this too, is you, you know, because you're losing some big deductions, you know, you have to be taking advantage of those 401k contributions. They've gone up this year a little bit based yes. on the new tax rules. Um, and how about you know, health savings accounts? That's another one where you know, if you're in a high deductible plan at work, that could be a tremendous deduction uh, that you might want to start looking to utilize. Yeah, health savings account are really a, a, a terrific tax deduction. Um, they obviously benefit people who are younger and don't have as much health costs because then they could put money into their health savings account and not use it and let it keep growing tax-free. So that, that is certainly a, a good deduction. Yeah, and if you're a family this year, I believe it's somewhere over $6,000 a year that you can deduct right Correct. off the top of your income, which is a, a big, big help. Correct. Uh, Jeff, I saw that uh, you know corporations are getting a big tax cut and that the maximum tax rate, which was 35%, is now dropping down to 21%, but we're in a registered investment advisory business and we don't benefit from that. How about uh, accountants? Do they uh, benefit from that new tax structure? Uh, well, the rate drop you're talking about is first what's they call C corporations, which are usually larger corporations with many shareholders, and they are getting that unbelievable windfall of a major drop in their tax rate. But for everybody else, there certainly is another benefit for what they call pass-through entities, which is LLCs, S-Corps, and also includes sole proprietors. They do have a provision that allows you to deduct 20% of your business income, uh, what they Mm. call qualified business income. This is a very, very new, complicated area of the tax code. There are certain professions that can't take advantage of this, such as accountants, lawyers, engineers, (laughs) doctors, and Those are also subject to certain income limits. And then for everyone else, they can take advantage of this. And 
There are many anti-abuse rules and limitations around this, but it certainly will be some benefit for the rest of us. Hmm. Yeah, that's another reason why I have to sit down with an accountant and kind of see where things are going to lie, especially if you're a small business. I know we're doing that with our accountant right now because it's it's huge. Yeah, that area is going to evolve. There's so much uncertainty surrounding that. Uh, for instance, they basically say consultants are limited, but that really is almost everyone. So it's not clear what they really mean and how the regulations are going to come out and how they clarify this. So it's a, it's a big uh, unknown right now. So what you're really saying, Jeff, how the tax game is going to be played <laughs> have not really been. <laughs> yes, it certainly, is, it certainly is a game. We have to try to play it as, as best we can. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. That's Jeff Bernstein, principal of Bernstein Rosen and Company, my good friend, my go-to tax guy in New York City. Great to have you as always, man. My pleasure, Ryan and Bob. Have a great day. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate your time. So, Ryan, sounds like uh, same old, same old from Washington. Instead of the tax simplification, sounds like everything got more complex, according to Jeff. As it always does, Bob, <laughs> as the sun rises in the east. Well, we can't do anything about the tax code, but what we can do, and if you want to simplify your life, if you're one of the next few callers and you have at least 200000 saved for retirement, my son, Ryan, and I will run for you our total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, but what we'll do is we'll run a full holistic review and give you access to our 360 financial portal. And we'll look at everything. We'll do a full portfolio x-ray of your entire portfolio. We'll verify that you're properly diversified to be certain that you're getting the returns for the risk that you're taking. We want to look at fees to make sure you're not being overcharged. You know, there's a lot of hidden costs in investments. They're buried deep into the perspectives of your mutual fund or in that big annuity contract. And we're going to look at your income to make sure that you have a more dependable income stream. You know, when it comes to investing, income is much more dependable than capital gains. Now, you need both to have a successful investment plan. We want to be certain that you have that in your plan. And we want to be certain that you know what you own and why you own it. We're going to create for you your own 360 financial portal, which will chart your progress towards the great goals of life not just today, but in real time for the rest of your life. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years. See, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B. That's your goals. That's your dreams with your values. And we're able to do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a professional fiduciary can provide. Don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Go ahead and call or text 844-752-6692. Simply call us at 844-PLAN-NYC. Don't waste time. If you're one of the next 10 callers with over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Payne Capital Management. Call 844-PLAN-NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what was out there in the media this week was just so repulsive that you want to talk about it today on Financial Pornography of the Week. Well, you know, I'll give the media credit for something, Rye. They're really good at putting labels on things. For example, do you know what baby boomers are? What age group are baby boomers? All right. I'm going to guess probably around 55 to 75. That's, that's, you know, you're almost right on just a little bit different to 50 to 70, but you know, we all know that's the baby boom generation, but you know, they've named a lot of other generations you might not have heard of. For example, have you ever heard of generation Z? I'm going to generation. No, no, generation Z, Bob. 
<laughs> All right. What, what age group is that, Rye? What would you guess? I'm going to guess. Okay. I'm going to just take a wild guess. It's probably the generation after the millennials. So that would be anyone who's like, I don't know, 20 or younger. Wild guess. Well, it's uh, you're right. It's the generation before the millennials, and it's 18 to 20. Now, you've talked about the millennials. We all hear millennials all the time. What age group are they? Millennials have to be, I'm going to say, from 25 to 35. All right, 21 to 34. And then the next generation you might have heard of is Generation X. The best generation, Bob. That's me. <laughs> so that's anyone in their late 30s to, to 50, right? Yeah, they're the people that uh, somehow are not millennials. They're not baby boomers. They're right in between. <laughs> We're the we forgotten ones. Called the silent generation, right? That's right. That's right. That's uh, will be your father's generation, correct? Yeah, seventy plus. So we we have all these generations. So I have a trivia question for you: Which generation Shoot. has the most debt and worst credit scores? <laughs> Let's see. Well, Bob, I know that the baby boomers like to live like it's the wild west. So I'm going to say baby boomers. Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get off your high horse. Stop giving us baby boomers crap because it's your generation. <laughs> That's really? The highest average mortgage debt. And they also have the lowest credit scores of all the generations that I just stated. No way. Really? It's the generation? Yes. I mean, I'm in my uh, fiscal yes. picture looks pretty good, but okay. I mean, oh. I'm, I'm shocked to hear that. I would have, I'm surprised, but I guess we're the most... Uh, negligent generation when it comes to finances. That's news to me. Well, I think it was just an unfortunate timing, Rye. I think a lot of, of your generation bought housing at the peak right before the bubble burst, right? You were just ah. hitting your stride and starting that you know formation of homes and and you bought the most expensive homes in the higher income neighborhoods to get into those good schools for your children. And I think that's probably what it had to do. I mean, you know, they've saddled with the highest average mortgage, but it's not that much different than the boomers. But again, you know, we're just get a black guy. We're not as bad as everybody thinks. I'm impressed. I really would have thought that uh, you would have been uh, the ones that were probably the most fiscally irresponsible, in all due respect, Bob. <laughs> all right. Well, that's, that's a little more informative than typical financial pornography, but there's plenty of it out there, son. So what did you trip over this week? What I tripped over this week, I was reading my, my barons as I like to do on the weekend, and I found this statistic, which was very unnerving for me, Bob. Hmm. What statistic would that be? Okay, so investors poured $169 billion into active taxable bond funds with the intermediate term variety, often the core of fixed income portfolios, getting the bulk of that money with about $73 billion. And you know how- Into bonds. Into bond funds. Into oh, bond even funds. Worse. Even worse. So you know, with interest rates potentially going higher here, um, and you know- we don't like bond funds, Bob. Uh, that's a pretty scary statistic where investors are putting their money. Well, you know why we don't like bond funds, right? Because bond funds are bad. <laughs> they are bad, but why are they bad, Bob? Well, they're bad because they're heads you lose, tails you lose. You know, it sounds good when interest rates are, are going down and bond prices are going up. You think, wow, I got a great investment. You know, I'm getting income plus my portfolio is appreciating. But the problem with a bond fund, it's open-ended. An open-ended bond fund means anybody, and I mean anybody, can put money in there side by side with you. So you might have been smart enough to buy a bond when it's yielding 6%, and then when rates are 2%, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars are invested in that bond fund. So you no longer have a 6% yielding investment. You now have a 2.1% yielding investment. That's right. Of course, the, the opposite of that is when rates rise, like it's starting to happen now very gradually, you would think that as new money comes in, they're going to buy and, and invest in higher yielding bonds. But when rates really start to go up, right, and bond prices drop and bond funds go down every month on a monthly statement, what do you think bond fund holders do with their investment? They sell. And I remember they this sell. very, very clearly because I was going through with a client just the other day, he had some bond funds on his portfolio. And he said, well, these things are safe. You know, They're short term. Uh, the money comes back. And I showed him in 2008 when interest rates did spike up, this bond fund was down about 19%. And that's not what you want on your bond investment, which is supposed to be a safe investment. You, know, you don't want your investment going down 18% when it's supposed to be something like bonds. Well, how do you get around that, Rye? You know, you know, the way we like to own bonds, Bob, obviously, is, is you want to own your bonds outright. And right now, it's probably more critical than ever. You want to know that you have a maturity date because if rates do go up, bond prices will come down and you need some protection there. And a bond fund is just not going to provide the protection of having a bond that actually has a maturity date. That's a critical difference. And you should really 
make sure that's the way you own them or talk to your financial advisor about that. So if you have a, a, a an institutionally priced managed bond portfolio, you actually want rates to go up because they're going to reinvest your maturing bonds into higher yielding bonds. Where in a bond fund, it can go down and the price can stay down, not just for a little while, but for the rest of your life. Who wants a perpetually losing investment proposition? Not me. I know I don't, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's for sure. And the reason rates could be going up, right? is because last I checked, they haven't repealed the business cycle. And every business cycle, we get inflation at the end of that cycle. We've been in a big booming bull market in stocks for the last eight years, and we've had a slow growth economy, but nonetheless, it's growing and inflation's coming back. And it's yeah, low maybe. now, but it's been creeping up in the last year. And if it continues, interest rates have nowhere to go but up. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And we have to realize that you know the environment is changing. And I think that's a key thing to remember. It's not that you don't want to own bonds. It's in critical how you own those bonds. And a bond fund is not the way to go. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I own a lot of bond funds, or I need to figure out how to create safety in my portfolio. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will do our total financial master plan. That's when we analyze all your investments for you and look at what pitfalls you might have in your portfolio. First, we're going to take everything you have, your 401ks, brokerage accounts, annuities, and we're going to put everything into one personalized portal for you, our 360 portal, so we can view everything in a holistic manner and we can see what the big picture looks like. Then we're going to do a full analysis of your investments with our investment x-ray. We're going to look at income. What kind of income does your portfolio produce? Income is so critical for retirement. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. Is your money properly spread out? What pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? Do you own high cost bond funds? That might be a big problem if interest rates go up. We're going to show you what you need to do to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of fees in those mutual funds, those bond funds, again, annuities, insurance products. Bob and I are going to show you all the fees in your portfolio, specifically those hidden fees, and show you where you're being overcharged on your investments. Then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to tie everything together. We're going to model out. Are you going to outlive your money? Or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Call or text 844-752-6692. Now there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached, but you can't take advantage unless you give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pain of no pain, no gain financial radio. Your personalized path to financial freedom awaits at Payne Capital Management. For more information, go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are here to educate you. We want to make sure that you have the best, most up-to-date practical advice when it comes to your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide that you can download for free, the highlights of the new tax reform. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Bob and I break down all the highlights of the new tax reform. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. Get all the highlights so you know what you're doing this year for taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888- 888 and download your free copy of our highlights of the new tax reform. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, and yes, Bob does have some of the best hair from any man who's a financial planner, you can check us out on the web at bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And you can subscribe to our uh, radio show in digital format. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, 
You can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will directly answer your questions. And if it's a really good question, as always, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions this week. So, Bob, the first question comes in from Carl. He's in Jersey City. He writes in, Bob, is it wise for me to own some gold in my portfolio? What percentage is appropriate? Ryan, you know my rule with gold. I don't think it's a great investment because, number one, it's too heavy to carry around. It doesn't pay a dividend. And last I checked, you can put it in your teeth, but you can't eat it. So <laughs> as an investment, <laughs> it's not exactly an investment that I would recommend. But there's always been this fascination with gold. I can't turn on the financial news without seeing a gold commercial. So they must be getting paid a lot of commissions and a lot of fees to store it because they're certainly paying for a lot of advertising. But well, let me tell you what I do believe. I do believe that you should have alternative investments. Now, what does that mean, Rye? Well, that means you want to have investments that move up and down differently than your financial assets like stocks and bonds. So I think that uh, gold, which is a commodity, should be in a basket of commodities. Now, Rye, what are the other commodities that uh, you would have in that basket? Well, you know, if you think about some of the basic ones, that's a good point. Gold is a commodity. Uh, things like oil, and oil has obviously had a fantastic run-up uh, over the course of the last couple of months. We're over $60 a barrel again. Other physical assets, Bob, that I would think about are agriculture, livestock in your portfolio, all those things that tend to be, to your point, a hedge against the stock market. So you're right. As a standalone investment, gold can be, what we always forget too, a very volatile asset class. And they love to uh, put in commercials how it's a safe haven, but anything that's as volatile as gold, I wouldn't really call a safe haven. I mean, it's definitely counterintuitive. Well, it's like anything else. When you want to make an investment, it makes no sense when there's 12,000 publicly traded stocks to pick one, right? And and eliminate the 11,999 from your portfolio. So when it comes to having an alternative investment to have a diversified portfolio, it doesn't make sense to just buy one commodity, whether it's oil or gold or copper or wheat, buy a diversified portfolio of commodities as a hedge against the rest of your portfolio. So the whole idea is to have different investments in your portfolio that go up at different times. And to me, that's the safest way to have a portfolio that is not all or none and you get rich slowly. And last I checked, Rye, It's the tortoise that wins the race, not the hare. (laughs) Well said. Well said. Um, Yeah, diversification is is one of the the cornerstones and so important that you review your portfolio to see where's your concentrated risk. And that's, you know, the review that we do, that's where we're able to look at those things and see where you have maybe too much money concentrated and what areas you may want to have some money in. And commodities can be a great diversifier, to your point, Bob. Why don't you reach down into that mailbag and see if we have any other questions that came in this week. (laughs) Going all the way to the bottom, Bob. Putting my hand all the way in there. And here's a question from Laura. She's in White Plains, New York. She writes in, Ryan, I am convinced that the market will crash soon, and I'm ready to move everything to cash. Should I wait? Well, hang on. Hang on, Laura. Let me get my crystal ball out. (laughs) Hold on. Should should Laura read the plaque on my desk, right? What's that plaque say again, Bob? I always forget. The world doesn't end very often. The world doesn't end very often. Very true. No truer words have been spoken. Um, and, and the bottom line is, look, it's un, you can't predict when the next crash is going to happen. And this is why we do the financial pornography segment every week, because there's always someone predicting that there's going to be doom and gloom in the future. And let's face it, I don't think anyone expected that the markets were going to take off the way they did at the beginning of this year. Now, I will say, and we talk about this on the show a lot, Bob, and you can attest to this as well, it's not if the market's going to crash. If it does, you already have to be protected. No, it's so true, Ry. It's um, you, you have to have a portfolio that's process-driven. In other words, you want to invest on purpose, invest towards your specific goals, whether it's the education of your children or grandchildren, whether it's creating a lifetime of income that you can't outlive, whether it's titling your assets for an estate plan where it's not an IOU to the IRS, invest on purpose, invest for a process-driven strategy as opposed to an event-driven strategy, like something like a a stock market crash. No one can predict those. And by the way, Rye, do you know what percentage of the time we have a stock market crash? I think it's like 15%. That's my my best guess. half of 1%. Wow. So it rarely ever happens. 
Yeah. <laughs> it very rarely happens. It's yeah. so rare that it's probably not going to happen again in your lifetime. But even if it does, every dip in history has been temporary and the up's inevitable. So I would love to have a buying opportunity where we have a 50% correction so I could buy more. You know, it's, it's, um, but you know what? The market doesn't do what it wants you to do. And you shouldn't sit there hoping to get a market that's better than the one you have. You know what I always say, Rye? Invest in the market you have, not the market you want. Well, you know, and I want to add to that, though, Bob, I think something that's important to think about is, you know, look, there are going to be corrections and crashes along the way. And, you know, you should be preparing your portfolio based on where you are towards retirement. The market had a big run up last year and it's having a big run up this year. But let's be realistic about this. Last time we had a bull market was like 10 years ago. You're 10 years closer to retirement or you're in retirement right now. You can't afford to have the same risk in your portfolio you did back then. So the question you don't want to ask yourself is a market correction happening anytime soon. Is the portfolio I have in place today appropriate given where I am in my life? Because let's let's you know, let's be realistic about it. You can't afford, if we do get a market correction, to have the same kind of hit you may have taken back in two thousand and eight when you were a lot younger. So going back to what you said, Bob, about having a process driven portfolio, that's what it's about. Assess where your portfolio is today based on where you are in your life today. Very critical. It's just so hard for people, Rye, because we're all average, normal human beings. And fear Speak and for yourself. <laughs> no, I agree. I'm an average, normal human being as well. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, right. Wall Street is full of average people who think they can do extraordinary things. But you know what? <laughs> there were two great questions on the mailbag. I've got a question for you. Hey, whenever you're sitting with someone and you ask them on a scale of one to 10, how organized are they financially? What do they tell you, Rye? I'm going to say for the most part, we're about a four because we have stuff everywhere. On a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think everybody should be? We all should be a 10. Yes, and if you'd like to be a 10, all you've got to do is be one of our next 10 callers as long as you've saved 200000 for retirement. Because Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal, which will give you a window into your financial life. This means every account number, password, security question for every bank account, brokerage account, insurance policy, credit card, even your mortgage. Virtually everything with a statement and online access is now simplified and organized into one simple financial portal. Man, wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? Just think about how easy it will be for your children or for your spouse to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs in a worst case scenario. Now, if you're one of the next 10 callers, this is exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to do a financial x-ray of your whole portfolio. We're going to look at the key three elements of a successful portfolio diversification, fees, and income. We want to be certain that you have more dependable income in your portfolio, that you're not being overcharged by your portfolio. And we want to be certain that you're going to have the most return for the least amount of risk in the portfolio that you currently have. We're going to answer that age old question by doing a wealth projection, which will tell us whether you're going to outlive your money or if your money's going to outlive you, utilizing strategies that my family has now been perfecting for over four decades. We want to help take you and your family from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN. NYC, give us a call or text us at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Don't waste time. We have a few slots left. Get a holistic review. Call or text us at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Ranking. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you are as educated as possible. And that's why we put together our newest guide that highlights the tax reform. You can get a free copy of this by simply texting the word bullish to 555-888. Text the word bullish and you get our newest guide that breaks down all the highlights of the new tax reform. Make sure you're ready this year from a tax standpoint, making all the right decisions. Simply text the word bullish to 
888. You can download our free new guide that highlights the new tax reform at 555-888. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning, Payne Capital Management Financial Advisor, Jen, Financial Angel. Good morning, Jen. Great to have you on the show. Good morning, guys. How are we? No complaints. Bob's better than all of us because he's in Florida. Obviously. But it's still cold down here, Jen, so don't, uh, you know, don't oh, worry. Don't, don't even. <laughs> <laughs> no empathy from Jen whatsoever. <laughs> no. um, and thanks for joining us for the Spotlight segment. And every week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan, and we like to uncover the flaws or what we call pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And Jen, looks like you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give us a rundown on what uh, what's going on here with this case? Sure. So I had this couple come in. They're in their late 50s. He's a little bit older, and he's really been their breadwinner. So he came in and said, I want to retire by the time I'm 60. I think I have enough money. I think I have my investments in the right place. You know, What do I need to do? Make sure I can do that. Can I do that? So basically what we did is obviously go through his retirement projections, which he had never really sat down with an advisor and done that. So my first question was, how do you know you can retire? Can you even... Have you done those numbers? Have you looked at everything? Um, and he saved really well. So really it's a matter of doing kind of worst case scenarios is really just really interested in. Looking at, you know, let's say you retire at 60, you know, you don't have Medicare yet, doesn't have it through his employer. So looking at healthcare plans, you know, any kind of worst case scenario, they don't have long-term care. So, you know, worst case, let's say it's, you know, $100,000 in your 80s, you know, and that's in 20 years. So it's going to be that much more in 20 years and you know, just based on health care costs. So I think that kind of, you know, brought them back to reality a little bit. Right. Thinking, you know, yeah, we don't, they're not overspenders now, but the reality is you could be in 15, 20 years. And, you know, what does that look like? Well, I'm looking here. He's going to retire in two years. He's in his late 50s right now. Yeah. He's got almost 70% of his portfolio in the market. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. What's with all the risk? Exactly. And, you know, he's, he's worked really hard and he's got maybe a couple more years of working. And I said, we'll definitely have to dial back the risk, especially, you know, we have a couple of years where Social Security is not kicking in yet. You know, your wife's a little bit younger, so we got to make sure if something happens to you, you know, she's protected and everything else. So really it was kind of building that structure now before he retires, right? Not afterwards. So Jen, when you when you ran the projections, one of the nice things that I find when you're using our financial portal is to run what if scenarios. What would be the ideal retirement for this couple? Yeah, I mean the ideal is he retires in a couple years, right? And has sixty mm-hmm. and she's in her later fifties at that point. You know, they have X amount in their portfolio that's basically gonna sustain their lifestyle. You know, you have you have to factor in health care. Um, you know, their kids are out of the, the house taking care of at this point, but you know, you also never know. So really making mm-hmm. sure we have the right income coming in, um, you know, before all those other incomes you come into play. And if you're only depending on Social Security, you know, it's just not going to be enough. I think a lot of people, they mistaken uh, or they don't see the benefits of, you know, when you retire a couple of years earlier than, than you normally would, that's a couple of years where you're taking money out of your investments as opposed to putting in. And that's two or three years less of compounding and it makes a huge difference. Even if you have yeah. a couple million dollars like they do, it's a significantly difference in terms of peace of mind. And, you know, also from our perspective, you know, being able to plan, you know, for those unexpected expenses that uh, that happen in retirement. And the good thing is, I mean, if you if you do retire early, you have kind of those 10 or so years where you're not necessarily pulling from your port. You don't have to, quote unquote, pull from your portfolio at 70 and a half for those distributions. But then we have some wiggle room there. Where we can kind of say, OK, what is what are the tax plans look like in your 60s? You know, that might change mm-hmm. in a couple of years, depending on who's in charge. But, you know, we can kind of at least do an estimated plan and tax wise what you're going to have to take out and then what makes sense. Yeah, we had a couple retired the other day and, and they, they were a little bit panicked because they thought they're going to keep their expenses under control. But then they moved into this beautiful adult community where all of a sudden she's involved in every club and, and she's taking Zomba lessons and she's <laughs> taking cooking lessons and she wants to do the cruises. 
And he said, no, no, what about just sitting and watching TV all day? She said, no, that's not for me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, yeah. we had this war going on on how much money we're going to spend in retirement that wasn't really in the plan initially. So there are those unexpected expenses once you do decide to uh, you know, retire from your current job. And, you know, his current portfolio, the way it's structured is just not going to be, you know, in the right place it needs to be if he's wanting to retire early. You know, when we ran our numbers, just cash flow wise, you know, we can increase his cash flow by $28,000. And that right there is the healthcare cost. That's any unexpected trips you want to take. I mean, that is just going to be huge for this couple, especially if he's going to retire earlier than, you know, Social Security. I love that because, I mean, what you're doing here is it's like you're saying, okay, we need to make this portfolio retirement ready now because the way mm-hmm. it's right, you know, you have 70% of the money in equities. Let's face it, we're in eight, nine years of a bull market now. Market pulls back. That could derail their retirement. They're not capturing any of those gains. But if you reallocate the portfolio like you're showing here, Jen, I mean, that's pretty awesome to say, hey, here's another 28 grand a year coming in just in income Mm -hmm. that you don't have to rely on is the market going to be up or down. That's huge. That has a lot of certainty into your portfolio. The market doesn't go up every year? (laughs) No, believe it or not. (laughs) I know that's what happens. Uh, It's an old Bobism. Bob used to say, don't confuse brains with a bull market. You know, we forget (laughs) when the market's going up. It doesn't go up every year. You know, I actually had someone say it to me the other day. They said, well, you know, I'm doing 19% a year on my portfolio. I'm like, you did 19% last year in your portfolio. Yeah. That's not every it's year. It's not the same. <laughs> no, that's back um, to 2015. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. 20, exactly. Uh, and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need a plan like this that starts to factor in. I do want to retire or I'm retired now. I need a different type of portfolio. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a few slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and Gen Financial Angel will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. That entails a full holistic review. We're going to look at everything. We're going to build you your own personalized portal where we load in all of your assets. We're going to look at that 401k, your IRAs, brokerage accounts, insurance policies, annuities in one place. And we're going to do a full review just like this. We're going to look at income. Could you increase the income on your portfolio by another Twenty-eight, thirty thousand dollars a year. Let's to see if we can optimize the income on your portfolio. What risk? What pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? This couple has seventy percent in the market, and they're trying to retire. Are you protected if the market pulls back? And we're going to look at all those fees, those hidden costs on your portfolio, and show you how to reduce the fees on your portfolio. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together and model out, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies now, our team has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't miss out. There's a few slots left. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement. Our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, but you're going to miss out if you don't call 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text us at 844-752-6692. Well, another great show this morning, and I always cherish the times that we have, Jen. Financial. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> and again, always, always uh, as humble as always. But no, sincerely, Jen, thanks for being on the show. Always thanks great to have me. you. Thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure. Always great to have you, Jen. And um, I just hope that all of you are going to go in and put on your green and white and cheer for my Eagles in the NFC Championship Patriots. game against the Vikings. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> Hey, guys, we're in New York here. Tone it down a little bit. (laughs) Hey, I grew up in Philadelphia. We don't get to the NFC Championship, but once in a lifetime. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.